As novelists go, Marlon James is considered pretty highbrow. A Brief History of Seven Killings won the Booker Prize in 2015. So the literary world did not expect him to follow that with an epic fantasy series. George R. R. Martin emails me. He's like, I heard you're writing an African version of my book. I said African Game of Thrones as a joke. I said it in this magazine, which I thought very few people read. He did say it was cool though, so and he invited me to do a reading in Santa Fe. The whole trilogy is influenced by his obsessive research into ancient African storytelling. Somebody's gonna pick this up and go, this ain't no fucking Westeros. Black Leopard, Red Wolf, it's a novel, but it was also my chance to just geek the hell out on everything. It's a storyteller telling stories about stories. They're witches, they're anti-witches. There's we're leopards, we're cheetahs, we're hyenas. They're characters who completely make you change reality. The leopard jumped, but she grabbed him by the neck, heaved him off the floor, and flung him against the wall. Her eyes blue, her eyes white, her eyes crackling like lightning. One of the things about this trilogy is that it's three different witnesses telling the same story. With a lot of fantasy, good stays good and evil stays evil. Whereas what I was writing, people shift, people change allegiances, people change minds, and people, you know, are not what you think they are. The child is dead. There is nothing left to know. I am an exhaustive plotter. I have books and books and charts and charts and post-its all over the wall about what I think should happen in a book, and then I promptly ignore all of it. Uh, because I think characters should surprise. Like, a good writing day for me is me saying at the end of the day, man, I didn't see that coming. I'm also really sort of narratively promiscuous. Character A, you know what, we started the book together. It was real, it was good, but then character B is so hot. When I follow that character who sort of walks past the screen and then vanishes, that's what leads to the novel. That's what leads to a better novel. My name was my father's possession, so I left it by his gate. Tracker, who ends up telling the story, was never meant to be the character. Will you hear more, Inquisitor? I've never understood the whole idea of reading books from people who are just like you. And this is where a lot of literary fiction show kind of their bullshit towards genre fiction. I can see it being a convention to sell books, but I think it's also a convention used to lock away people who are writing really great novels, regardless of what they are. There are lots of queer characters in this book, and I think some people thought I was, you know, trying to score some intersectionality points. And it turns out that actually came from the research. Queerness and non-binariness and gender fluidity and sexual fluidity and even plural pronouns. These are all stuff that ancient Africa have been doing for four, you know, for thousands and thousands of years. None of that um, was new. They end up making a contemporary statement, which is true, but it actually, I mean, that's all the old shit. <laughs>